Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome on 129th Semao weekly session. Uh, this session is a new series where we have a new incoming president from Pakistan Medical Association. I, before we start the session, I welcome Dr. Wazik Kazi, who has taken over as a president for Simao. I would like to invite him for his inaugural uh, speech and give us an update what happened last week uh, in Simao uh, General Assembly. Dr. Wazik, congratulations, and uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sarab, uh, and very well, uh, warm welcome to all the uh, participants present here today. And uh, we had a wonderful uh, council and general assembly meeting at Karachi. It was held at the uh, Pearl Con Continental Hotel, and uh, uh, some of the delegates uh, arrived early. And they had a good uh, city tour as well. Uh, Chong uh, and uh, Angelic uh, Quidzi from uh, South Africa. After uh, from South Africa, they they arrived uh, earlier and they they came as observer for the Simao General Assembly. Uh, apart from uh, being observer, uh, they were invited speakers for a. Uh, parallel meeting of uh, Simao PMA Joint Medical Conference where they presented excellent papers. Uh, 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 Chong, uh, Dr. Chong uh, also arrived two days earlier and uh, it was wonderful to see him there at the General Assembly. Uh, then uh, a delegation of Malaysia led by uh, Karchai, who is the vice council chair as well, uh, they also, uh, you know, uh, were present uh, physically. So this was basically a hybrid meeting wherein we had uh, in-person participants and then online uh, participants. And uh, it was conducted and ran by uh, the Secretary General uh, Imamura uh, from Japan and uh, uh, all the online participants were there and uh, the uh, meeting uh, started with the, you know, uh, council uh, meeting and uh, everybody was there and uh, it was uninterrupted, uh, uh, you know, online uh, meeting and uh, the running was very smooth. Chong, uh, uh, as uh, chair of the council, was there. And uh, uh, important decisions and, you know, uh, presentations were made. And uh, we had uh, uh, Secretary General of uh, WMA also uh, uh, sent uh, his message, uh, uh, video message, and that was played there. Then um, uh, after the council meeting, we had the ceremonial, uh, you know, uh, meeting and wherein I was installed as uh, president uh, of CEMAO for the year 2022-2023. And uh, since uh, our uh, outgoing president, uh, Chu, could not make it physically, so he was there live uh, uh, from Taiwan. And on behalf of uh, President Chiu, uh, Dr. Chong, uh, you know, presented me the presidential medal. Uh, and uh, then uh, the decisions at the uh, council meeting, uh, where in all the reports, uh, like uh, by treasurer, by secretary general, were, were presented. And uh, Elvin was there uh, and uh, uh, then these decisions were endorsed by the General Assembly as well. And uh, the next uh, meeting venue and the meeting uh, was decided. And the next meeting will be in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And the president-elect is, uh, is uh, going to be Mustafa Jalal, Mustafa Jalal uh, Mohyuddin. And... Uh, 
hopefully uh, by that time we'll all be attending uh, in person uh, dhaka meeting uh, anyway uh, it was wonderful event and uh, we had uh, really uh, enjoyed the company of all the simao delegates who were there uh, in person and uh, it was nice to have Uh, other medical associations online live there and uh, i think everybody had real good time and the rest i think uh, the the delegates and the particip- participants who were there uh, they have been sharing their good experiences carrying back uh, sweet memories and uh, all in all it was a wonderful meeting thank you sirab i think that was the brief uh, resume of our meeting at karachi which was held on from 23rd 25th september thank you dr dr kazi dr kazi kindly bas i just uh, just remind you uh, kindly inform about the resolution which is being passed in in, in yes. our karachi statement that that uh, will be placed uh, over there uh, on the website uh everybody i think knows that uh, after the meeting there's a resolution which uh, comes as uh, the like uh, we had uh, one in taipei uh, statement uh, similarly we have a karachi statement which will be placed on the website of simao and everybody can see that it was wonderful thank you and uh, just to add uh, simao is a association of many asian countries over here and just to name uh, in this meeting it's australia bangladesh cambodia hong kong china uh, uh, india uh, korea japan macau malaysia myanmar new zealand pakistan philippines singapore sri lanka taiwan uh, thailand and we have also been joined by many other non asian countries uh, which are like you know we have seen people from canada us uk brazil south africa sweden so these are the regular participants which have come as an observer as well so uh, congratulations dr was it uh, to of our brazilian friends uh, they came all the way traveled a long distance and we are really thankful to them and it was wonderful uh, to have them okay jean carlo was there along with uh, carlo Okay. so uh, all in all it was fantastic so, thank you so much uh, congratulations once again from the entire simao team and now moving forward i would like to invite dr monica wasudev to invite the speaker for the day uh, dr monica wasudev has been with us over a period of time giving us knowledge and uh, all the way at this hour uh, you know so uh, dr monica can you please invite the speaker for the day It would be my pleasure. Uh, thank you uh, so much, and again, uh, congratulations, Dr. Kazi, for taking on uh, as the new president of Samal. Thank you, Sorab, for giving me this opportunity to introduce such an amazing speaker. So please bear with me because I want to share in detail everything that I know about her, and I think it is worth saying. So, Dr. Pragya Dhruv Yadav is a senior scientist. head of the biosafety level 4 laboratory asia's first state of the art facility to handle high risk pathogens at icmr niv pune during the pandemic she was involved in the timely diagnostic support and development of point of care assays anti sars human igg antibody elizas which is used widely in the country for diagnosis diagnosis and transfer to seven um, companies At first, the first three COVID-19 uh, cases were identified from Kerala, having travel history from Wuhan, and further genomic uh, surveillance was initiated. She has contributed significantly to shaping India's response to the SARS-CoV pandemic by early isolation of I- SARS-CoV-2, its variants, and fast-tracking the development of the indigenous vaccine and demonstrating the efficacy of covaxin against the different SARS-CoV-2 variants. I'm just going to stop here for a second to say you are more than welcome to come back to this forum to share your knowledge on other topics as well. Besides this, she has discovered many novel viruses 
and quickly provided diagnostic, diagnosis and helped in containment responses for Nipah, Zika, CCHF, KFD, and monkey uh, pox virus outbreaks um, in the country. She's developed uh, and discovered many ideological agents such as the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, Nipah, Zika, Tioman, Oya, Malsur, Katki, and the equine encephalosis and Kundal virus for the first time in India. So significant virology background. She has developed many cost-effective diagnostic assays. Her work has contributed to the beginning of research in highly infectious viral pathogens that has helped the prevention and control of outbreaks in India. She is a WHO consultant in the evaluation and validation of biosafety level three laboratories in Nepal and Bhutan. She is a recipient of many awards. Amongst them are the Bharat Bhagya Vidyata Samam 2022 Ministry of Culture, Government of India and ICM awards, just to name a few. She has published 275 research papers in national and international journals with an impact factor of 2630.34 and with 6,158 citations. We look so forward to what you have to say today um, and welcome to our forum. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Monica, for a very nice introduction and uh, very kind words from you. <clears throat> Today I have some sore throat, so just please bear with me. <clears throat> in Pune, the weather is a little colder than it is actually in this time. So, <clears throat> so um, I'm going to talk some of the experience which India has during the monkeypox outbreak, which is going uh, globally and uh, the cases are declining. But uh, prior to this, we all remember that we are going through a pandemic, which is still not over. Uh, the picture which I'm sh sharing on the screen, I, I hope this is visible properly to everyone. So this is a BSL-4 facility at uh, National Institute of Virology, Pune, which is premier institute of Indian Council of Medical Research. And uh, these are the teams working in BSL-3 and BSL-4 setup. As we all know that every health emergencies come with uh, fear, anxiety, and uh, there are nine priority diseases has been decided by World Health Organization. Uh, name of them, COVID is one of them, which we are going through. Then CCHF, Ebola, Lhasa, MERS, coronavirus, NIFA, Rift Valley fever, Zika, and many of these diseases are present you know, in the country which is attending today this, uh, meet, uh, this meeting. And whenever there is a new disease come that create a lot of fear, anxiety uh, to public health and also to the community. So in this situation, what the matter, the first, how early we can uh, diagnose or detect the disease if it is unknown and then uh, that can help in early containment and mitigation, which not only save the life, but also protect the economy uh, for uh, which we have seen happen during the pandemic. If we remember the some of the humanitarian crisis of 20th century, uh, we must remember 1918 uh, Spanish flu, 1957 Asian flu, and 1968 Hong Kong flu. With this, we also saw many civil unrest and uh, uh, drought in any uh, many countries. We have seen the West African uh, outbreak of Ebola, which affected many countries, whose number of death and Zika that again. Uh, a cause which actually affected millions of the people. And now we are suffering with COVID pandemic. During COVID pandemic, which affected not only the likelihood of human health, governance, security, social system, and economic system, but uh, the challenges of variant concern also uh, give a lot of uh, loopholes to the vaccine program, mass immunizations, vaccine hesitancies were all generated and it actually challenges scientists and public health authority across the world. To, uh, today, we have uh, uh, around 61.7 crore cases in the world and a huge number of deaths. And that also include India is also having a, a, a large proportion of the cases and death as well. During the pandemic, when we were dealing with this, uh, uh, with deadly disease, which affected every country's economy, we also faced many other viral diseases, including CCHF, NIFA, Zika. Uh, India reported its first avian influenza uh, cases and then monkeypox. And recently, we are seeing 
the Ebola outbreak, which is going in Uganda and current strain in Sudan. So the initially Ebola uh, vaccine, which was made for uh, Ebola gyre, now there is a new trial going on if the existing vaccine is working with the current outbreak. The number of cases are increasing and now a new case has been detected in, board, in bordering country. So what I'm trying to say here that uh, different viral diseases have challenged in, in this century uh, to the humankind and they are emerging day by day. And we know the reason because we are disturbing uh, the, uh, the wildlife and that, that's how the One Health is getting affected. When we talk about the monkeypox, uh, we have to first remember the smallpox and the country which we have just listed under the CMMO, uh, actually uh, many of the, they, they have gone through the suffering of smallpox. One of the disease which come under the family pox very be genus orthopox viruses and has caused, uh, uh, it is existed around 3000 years and uh, had uh, suffering to many countries cause a huge number of death. And uh, as per the record, the, the disease was appeared in China in fourth century, India in seventh century, and uh, slowly it uh, uh, went in Asia and spread to many other countries. With a 33% of mortality, the disease caused much of the mortality morbidity across the world. And in 1980, finally, it was declared, the word was declared uh, smallpox free. And if we look at the phylogenetic tree, which represent different pox viruses, at the tip we can see with the red monkey pox viruses, and then it has linked with vaccinia virus, here in the green variola virus, and rest of the uh, pox virus exist in different animal and human beings. The smallpox virus, which was uh, prevalent uh, in the past in many countries, including India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, China, and many uh, countries, and which passed from one, uh, uh, one generation to another and had a big challenge across the world. And it took uh, uh, the thanks to the vaccination and Pasteur Jenner who actually came up with the vaccine. So the transmission of smallpox, which was recorded in, in the past was mainly human to human and direct contact with infected body fluid. So uh, these were, the, uh, there was no known uh, source or uh, host known how the virus must be evolved or affected the human being. But yes, there is a, some record which speak about based on the history, how the disease is spread from one country to another. And in 18th century, it reached to the Great Britain and uh, then to Australia. So there is a his, huge history of the smallpox. Uh, and if you look at this map, which show that in 86, uh, there was a very small portion uh, of the people, uh, countries affected, and then 1920 spread. So as much the trade and uh, the rest of the things, uh, modernization improved, the disease also spread. And in 1926, India was one of the very high endemic country and contributed a huge proportion of the cases in the world. Finally, in 1977, due to a large vaccination program from World Health Organization and every country's uh, great support, and implementation, we could see the smallpox eradication was happening. And in, in India, in, in the last case was reported in Bangladesh. And after that, uh, we were declared as a free of uh, smallpox. So when we talk about the eradication of smallpox, the great role was played by uh, the vaccine, which was uh, made against the smallpox. And the uh, first to four generation of the vaccine was made for smallpox. Uh, the second generation vaccine, which was approved for 18 to 64, uh, used by bifurcated needle for a very long time, and which is also approved in USA. Then, uh, then later on, uh, further uh, the vaccine was enhanced, and it was uh, further used by uh, bifurcated needle. The third generation vaccine, which uh, later on developed, and it is being used in USA, Japan, and many other countries. Uh, they are produced by uh, Bavarian Nordic, uh, that is, and the se second vaccine is made by Chem Biologicals. Uh, these are now given by Nidil's uh, series, but uh, the third generation LC16 is still given by bifurcated needles. Uh, they are better and improved vaccine and given to, uh, to the adult population. The later on, uh, these vaccines uh, has also shown a better efficacy and low, lower side effect. So the, I'm just giving some of these backgrounds because when we talk about the monkeypox, these are the essential 
things which everybody discussed when the monkeypox outbreak happened. So even some of the preclinical studies has shown 100% protection with Ankara strain of vaccinia a multiple times, which was passage in chick fibroblast culture to make the Bavarian uh, Nordic uh, vaccine, which is being not even given for the pre-exposure, but also post-exposure vaccine. The fourth generation vaccine is developed by Russia by uh, 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 doing a genetically engineering uh, vaccine with the deletion and insertion. And uh, that has shown a very high excellent safety and efficacy. At the moment in USA and many countries, these two vaccine has been used, approved by FDA and used in previous countries. And uh, the first vaccine is called Invenix and second one is ACAM 2000, which is uh, licensed and used across. But most of the countries, Asian countries, do not have access to these vaccines. Recent one of the study from CDC has shown the, the data that if you are vaccinated, the risk of monkeypox uh, get 14 time reductions. And they have come up with the data that those people who are unvaccinated, uh, the chance of getting uh, monkeypox positivity was very high in compared to those who were vaccinated with one dose or two dose vaccine as per the vaccine type. So when we talk about a monkeypox, why everybody bothered now because Monkeypox was always considered disease of only uh, 11 countries in Western Africa and Central Africa. And uh, many of the countries only reported imported cases out in these, uh, which you can see in the blue color and, and the orange color is shown those uh, the, the virus where it was present. The virus was called even South African strain and uh, Congo strain based on their location of presence. Uh, the in the past, uh, the, there was some antiviral which was developed for antivirals are also effective for monkeypox. But again, the access and availability is a challenge for uh, many of the country in in the world. In the past, when uh, the the first uh, outbreaks were recorded during seventy to seventy nine, as we all know, the first case was recorded in nineteen seventy in a child, and then uh, there was a number of the outbreaks were recorded in in these countries and. Uh, the highest mortality and uh, highest morbidity was seen in the children and also in the females, which we are not seeing in the current outbreak. So in the past, uh, the pattern of the disease was uh, different, which we are seeing. And uh, out of these 11 countries, the um, imported cases have been recorded in USA in 2003. Uh, uh, there was importation of animal and from animal there was an outbreak. And then uh, further, there was single imported cases over reported in 21 and 22, uh, that was the cluster of the cases. Israel has reported imported case in 18, Singapore and UK also reported in 18, uh, 2019, 21. And uh, the first uh, uh, cases uh, of this particular outbreak, which is going on, reported from uh, UK in May 22, and that has initiated uh, outbreak across the world. If we talk about the reservoir of infections, uh, some of these animals, including a squirrel, a dormouse, mouse, and a rat, and a, a mang bay was a cause responsible. Monkeypox is a zoonotic disease, and it was always believed that it was transmitted from animal to human. Uh, uh, but in the past, there was also observed the transmission of monkeypox virus in prairie droughts, which was noticed in USA in captive primates in Europe and, uh, and other animals as well. So this is a case of 2003 monkeypox uh, transmission where animal to human uh, in a non-country outbreak was recorded. And uh, this outbreak happened because uh, animal was kept and that infected the rest of the animal. And uh, human and 69 people were infected in United States. Uh, with a very quick actions, the outbreak could stop. But this was the first recorded uh, outside of uh, these 11 countries, non envy countries, these outbreak. Uh, so there is a question, is there is a possibility of reverse genesis uh, from human to animal transmission. And in, in a recent episode, uh, the paper published in Lancet, it has shown that from human, infected human, there was a dog in the same house and that was infected. It showed all the symptoms and even the blisters and uh, the samples were positive. Sequencing was done and it shows exactly the same sequence which was uh, having to the, to the person um, with, staying with the dog. So these are certain questions which came uh, uh, this during this outbreak. There was a lot of also question if it is a sexually transmitted 
because the cases which happen in UK initially uh, for a uh, for a long time actually there was a question mark how the infection are spreading and then people could link on uh, to the place where there was a gathering of a gay population and then they could track epidemiological that the transmission was happening from men to men uh, who are having sex um, uh, individually or in, in, in with the different partners. In the past, uh, the infection was always believed animal to human transmission and from a mother to child or a pregnant a mother to the, to the fe fetus. And uh, these were uh, the some of the examples which I have seen here. Uh, there was also uh, the, the uh, monkeypox virus can also stay longer on the surfaces and it has even shown a uh, study virus in environment, in, in environment conditions. Uh, this shows actually high individual risk, low community risk, because most of the transmission happen uh, skin to skin or by very close context. Uh, in one of the study uh, of the four pregnant women in the past in Africa, one gave birth to a healthy infant who had miscarriage in the first trimester and one had a fetal death with the, uh, with the still bond showing diffuse cutaneous macular skin lesions involving the head trunk and, and also palm of hand and so on. So these kind of outcomes have been reported uh, in some of the cases. Recently, uh, there was also shown presence of virus in the semen and even virus isolation, live virus isolation was shown in, in few of the cases. Long-term positivity of semen was also recorded in few of the cases. So th that's how this question kept, uh, uh, people kept asking if it is happening through the STI uh, from the sexual context and all these things. But it's still so far in spite of presence of the virus in semen, it is not proven if it is uh, sexually transmitted. But yes, it is very well established that uh, very close contact, skin to skin contact, uh, contact is responsible for the transmission in the currently. So uh, this is a recent map which I uh, pick up from CDC uh, sites. We show that uh, till 29 September, we have around 68,000 uh, cases and 27 deaths and India also reported one of the deaths uh, so far from Kela in a imported case from UAE. If we talk about this virus genome, it is a DNA virus and which has one of the highest uh, genome, uh, which is 197 uh, kilo base. Uh, the, the cowpox virus is 220 kilo base. So it has a very huge genome and coding and understanding the mutations are very, very difficult because you cannot easily uh, do a laboratory study even uh, as we did in the in the SARS coronavirus that you can tweak some of the spike genes and you can look at the impact how the virus is mutating what is happening to that and moreover the DNA viruses are considered to be study and uh, they because of their proofreading they're considered to be very stable which again was challenged in the recent outbreak which is going in this current uh, outbreak. So if we talk about the diagnosis of disease uh, uh, there, because it is a DNA virus, so polymerase chain reaction uh, will be the best method and which is abundantly available across the world because of the pandemic. People have a huge number of laboratory and now they have uh, facilities infrastructure. But with this, the sequencing now people are, because in pandemic, everybody realized the genome sequencing importance and people are also monitoring the mutations happening in this virus. The virus isolation, where you grow the virus using the clinical sample in an artificial medium on a fixed cells uh, is one of the very good method, and it is very easily isolated virus. And electron microscopy is one of the oldest tool and also used for smallpox identification. In India, as soon as we realize that monkeypox virus uh, is emerging and we need to have the laboratory, in India, we have a laboratories network uh, uh, created by Indian Council of Medical Research. It's called uh, Department of Health Research Government of India. Under that, we have more, uh, we have more than 200 laboratories across the country, and they do all kinds of uh, virus research and virus testing. So out of those, according to geographical areas, 30 of the laboratories were chosen and in phase-wise manner. Before even we uh, detect the first case from India, they were trained. Uh, the phase one included those who are very close to the to the international airports. Uh, 15 VRDLs were trained, and then phase two and phase three. So now we have 30 laboratories across the country who can test on any referral samples. With this, we also uh, accepted the request from World Health Organization for training the CR member state 
and sending them reagents not only for the monkeypox but where the request was made for a varicella gister and herpes as well and these laboratories also become functional for testing such infected samples we also provided support uh, if the samples were referred from uh, some of the countries to india because we are uh, we are who collaborating centers for emerging infectious disease and we uh, sent report quickly on on a very high level so uh, initially when uh, there was a challenge to get the positive controls uh, and then speeding up our uh, reagents uh, so we uh, managed to very quickly and uh, we uh, i am going to share some of the work which we did here on this uh, monkeypox virus so uh, the after the preparedness was done the, the laboratories were trained and they were uh, shared with the reagents uh, at the same time ministry of health from india they uh, it released the guideline and it it actually sensitize each state also sensitize their healthcare workers hospitals uh, if such kind of any uh, referral uh, uh, cases are coming what to do where to refer what kind of precautionary measures to be taken and because of the covid uh, uh, pandemic preparedness people are quite well aware what to do when a such infected person come to hospital and after that uh, so far india has detected 18 monkey pox cases the first case was detected on 14th july and the last case was detected on 28th september so uh, we also carried out the genomic sequencing and virus isolation which enhance our capacity to do more research in this virus if we look at the old picture of a presentation of monkey pox which uh, show a huge number of lesions on the body of the child but in the recent outbreak which is going in different countries the picture is not the same the picture is changed the presentation is changed and actually that's that's how the role of clinicians come uh, to identify such cases so at the same time this is the season in in asia especially in the asian countries we are also seeing similar kind of patterns of presentation of measles uh, varicella zoster and also herpes and that uh, uh, panic create lot of confusion and most of the referral come for monkey pox actually turn out to be positive for varicella zoster virus so uh, the size in the past was uh, a monitor of 0.5 to 1 cm in diameter umbilical uh, rash and and they had the numbers of these rashes were huge in in most of the cases but uh, but in the recent study which was done by patel et al uh, published in in lancet and also in nagm they demonstrated that uh, they had uh, more than 500 cases and they demonstrated that typical lesions were uh, observed in 197 uh, but in there was a 2 uh, to 20 uh, people where uh, there were 100 some some odd numbers where the lesions were 2 uh, to 10 and even there was just one lesion in some of the uh, cases uh, there was observed there was also uh, there is a significant change in presentation of number of sites uh, in many cases there was only one site where lesion or blister were present and uh, the prominent sites were now seen genitals and as our perianal area and also the oropharyngeal but in the past uh, the presentation was very different which we have see, seen here in in the earlier picture so when we talk about the differential diagnosis uh, with the monkey pox we need to be prepared for not only chicken pox measles but but in india we also saw uh, a huge outbreak of hand foot mouth uh, disease which is enterovirus and that also uh, the main reason because the after 3 years school has opened and now we have very small children population who never exposed to any disease or virus and we have a very susceptible population and we saw a huge number of cases happening across the india and i'm sure the same scenario may be in other countries too uh, with this we also need to rule out some of the bacterial skin infections rickettsia pox scab disease and also muluscum contagiosum which is also have similar kind of presentation uh, and uh, get confusion so this is a picture of hm many cases presented which hfmd created kind of panic in the state and the samples were referred for testing even uh, we also saw uh, vjb cases which presented with a very severe kind of presentation and confused with the monkey pox so if we talk about the monkey pox uh, in india we have screen around 311 uh, suspected cases out of that 18 turned to be monkey pox positive 25 turned a uh, varicella zoster positive and 10 enteroviruses uh, the out of these cases 11 are male and 7 are female 
So uh, the theory which was uh, given uh, men to men sex and affecting mainly male is not actually happening. The females are also having uh, positivity now, not only in India, but also in rest of the part of the world where now not only the uh, females, but pediatric population are also showing positivity for monkeypox. And which is obvious because if they are in a very close contact with the parents and infected individual, there is a, uh, most likely they'll get infected. From India, only two states have reported the case. Uh, the first is a Kela. Uh, they have uh, Kela has reported six positive cases, and all of these cases are resident from Kela, but they have travel history from UAE. And uh, within the same week, they were detected positive with the monkeypox. So mostly, they are all coming uh, with a post, uh, uh, transmission from UAE uh, bringing to India. The cases from New Delhi, uh, twelve cases has been reported. Out of these, one case is Indian, and eleven cases are having uh, the origin from Nigeria, and and uh, they don't have any recent uh, travel history. But uh, in the past, uh, of uh, three months, six months, one month uh, prior, they have come back from Nigeria. So uh, this is the scenario here. When we detect the first case, we had three different uh, real-time PCR method uh, for orthopox, monkeypox, and also differentiation of uh, West African and uh, Congo strain. But now uh, we have uh, developed a one tube test where you can identify all these in one single tube and the test and uh, uh, process become very fast. So if we talk about the timeline of detection of monkeypox cases in India, of total 18 cases, uh, the cases started in on 14th July and then uh, slowly uh, uh, the cases uh, coming slowly, but they are coming. Uh, every week cases have been reported. Uh, we see some concentration during the month of, uh, at uh, in, in actually in the first uh, first week of the August. Uh, and uh, this is a scenario where we have also, there is a difference in PODs when we have detected the cases. The maximum number of the cases were detected at fifth uh, post onset day and um, five cases. Uh, the mean age of these cases are 29 years, and all of them are non-vaccinated uh, with the smallpox. Uh, uh, there was one death reported, uh, which also have the acute encephalitis uh, uh, symptoms from Kela. Uh, the heterosexual contacts were reported by 10 cases, six cases denied for providing the history, and uh, the case, uh, the death case, has uh, we could not un reveal because the person died very quickly and uh, it was admitted for AES treatment and later on it was confirmed for monkeypox virus. If we analyze all these 18 cases, we have seen the prominent uh, symptoms which were shown by these cases, the sore throat, fatigue, uh, lymphadenopathy, fever, and umbilicated vesiculopostular, which was present in almost all the cases. But with this, they also presented with back pain, chest pain, headache, and also uh, dysuria and genital swelling was also one of uh, myelagia, fatigue. These were some of other symptoms presented in these cases. If we talk about the presentation of lesion, which I was mentioning that in the past, the huge number of lesions were reported uh, when outbreak happened in West and uh, Central Africa. But now uh, there was uh, five such cases. They have less than 20 lesions counts. And there were uh, seven cases where they have around 21 to 50 lesion counts. And there was only five cases which presented with 51 to 100. And there was one which we could not uh, reveal uh, the death case. There was not much uh, identified. There was one genital lesion present in the case. So it will also look at how uh, these lesions are presented in different parts. So uh, the genitals and upper limb, uh, the trunk, lower back and face, these are the very prominent site, but also it was present in groin area, neck area, soul and oral cavity and scalp. So these are like distribution of the lesions uh, presented in different parts. So uh, the, these are the pictures of the first two cases from Kela, uh, returnees from UAE, where we, uh, the, these lesions were identified. Uh, these are the pictures of the Delhi cases uh, where uh, uh, in the female, two of the female cases, where the lesions were presented in uh, different uh, body parts. And uh, these, uh, these, uh, the details of these two cases and daily cases are already available um, uh, on the web portal. If we look at uh, the distribution of uh, these uh, uh, 
these rash, uh, the symptoms and rashes. So the lymph adenopathy was one of the prominent feature present in almost all the cases. Uh, they had non-tender form and at present at um, uh, multiple sites. And inguinals was uh, the area where it was highly uh, uh, predominant. Cervicals were also showing these kind of presentations. So uh, this is a distribution further uh, to understand how these cases were presented. We also studied how, how long the virus secretion is happening in the individuals and when uh, they are actually, because we say that once the crust get dry and then you, you can release the patient from the hospital, from the isolation ward. So we wanted to understand exactly how long virus is multiplying in the body and if the live virus is present or not. So we followed five of the cases. We followed actually all the cases, but I'm showing you data of five of the cases. And we could demonstrate uh, that uh, if you look at, we taken the samples at every fourth of BID of these cases, including nasal, uh, nasal uh, throat swab and uh, urine serum, EDTA blood, lesions loop, uh, lesions loop, fluid base, and also the crust. And uh, the data demonstrated very uh, uh, distinctly that the lesion samples were having highest viremia and also highest duration, but at the same time, we also observed the urine sample was also very prominent sample, which was presented longer and can also be used as a, a diagnostic uh, samples. The same time, we could also see the positivity in throats and, uh, and nozzle swab. And uh, we realized importance of this case when the fifth case who died with the AES, uh, because the case, uh, death case happens, so they could only take uh, the sample of nasal swab and throat swab. And that could not only show the positivity, but also the genome could be retrieved and could be proven that the, the person was infected with uh, monkeypox. So if we summarize the data of this, uh, this uh, study, then we could find uh, the uh, monkeypox DNA from fifth POD to 24th POD. And uh, the copy number of the viruses was also uh, visible uh, very well in, uh, in, in the urine uh, TSNS samples and in the lesion, uh, different lesion samples. Uh, uh, in the e there was only one case where we could see uh, the viral positivity in EDTA uh, blood and uh, serum samples were uh, negative in all the cases except one case with the high copy number of virus. So this is a kind of a graph which present how long which sample is having positivity. And uh, recently there is a one paper yesterday only it has arrived in Lancet and they have followed the different clinical sample of human uh, to understand that how long uh, the sample can be positive. The end. And the analysis and finding of the study also again say that the, the close skin, uh, skin, skin context is the mainly cause of the transmission of the monkeypox in the current outbreak. So this is a, uh, the case which I'm talking about, the death case from Kela, which was a very young boy an immunocompetent male with no significant past medical history, uh, admitted in unconscious state to a private hospital in Kela following a single episode of acute onset generalized tonic, tonic seizures. And the, the clinical features, MRI finding, CSF picture, and EEG finding of these cases suggests encephalitis. And uh, the only sample which was available was the OPS and PS, and they were found positive for monkeypox. The genomic sequences uh, reveal a presence of A.2 lineage of clad 2 b uh, which was uh, actually, which we found in the later study that it is present in all of the cases which is present in India of the same uh, lineage. So it means the cases which is imported from UAE, or I can say that UAE may be having the same strain circulation as well. So this, uh, this, is, uh, this is a presentation of this case uh, where we could demonstrate the positivity of OPS and NPS. We could isolate the virus in vero cells and on, on the second uh, days itself, the, uh, the cells started changing. We could op observe the cytopathic effect and it was isolated for the susceptibility was studies in different eight cell lines. The electron microscopic images was uh, taken and we could see a very good pictures of uh, pox, which is very typical uh, for this particular family to see. We have developed uh, uh, also the validation protocol for any new uh, PCR company or private firm if they would like to send for validation, which can be done here. And a proper panel was approved by a committee made by ICMR, which is available with us. 
we also uh, we are also developing uh, igg eliza to understand uh, how uh, not only the igg eliza but uh, uh, the neutralization assay to understand as in india the people who are more than 45 uh, years mostly everybody is vaccinated with this one box so if they have uh, some protections in with the current monkeypox and in that light we are developing those these two assays we could see a good uh, cross activity with the the sera of those people who has a immunization with smallpox if we talk about the genome of uh, these uh, west african and central african clad which was present uh, and it was say that the central african is present in congo and those area and west african was present in a specific area so it was always claimed that the central african clad is highly uh, pathogenic uh, and kill higher number of the people in compared to the west african uh, clad but in this recent scenario we are not seeing the same case the current outbreak uh, when happened then there was a lot of confusion how to label them uh, by clade and then who has come up with a new definition so uh, not to put in the central africa or uh, kind of congo basin and also they have now categorized as clad 1 clad 2 the clad would consist the old strain uh, prior to 2018 and the clade 2 is further divided into clad 2a and clad 2b which is mainly uh, uh, taking a reference of all the sequences which is being uh, done during this outbreak which is going across the many country. So this is a phylogenetic uh, representation where you can see in, in the bottom, these are the blue one uh, which is actually uh, presented from the endemic countries and uh, uh, called as a clade one. Uh, then clade two is divided into 2A and 2B and a current outbreak uh, is mainly happening because of the 2B. The outbreak which started from UK in May uh, is spread many part of the country and initially it was called as B1 lineage, which you can see here in the, the orange color and further divided B1 is now up to B.1.7. So it is, it is mutating faster than it has happened in the past. Similarly, there is another uh, clad which is called A. A is also further divided and now it is labeled as A1, A.11 and, and so on. In India, we are founding 8.2 clade and its sub lineage, which is also for the mutating. So, so, so definitely virus is uh, playing very notorious in compared to, to the past, which we have seen. If we talk about the genomic sequences of lineage B1, which started spreading from Europe to other countries, it clustered with the sequences of 2018-19 and linked to the endemic countries and which further a divergent uh, phylogenetically and reflect that there was a, some short of uh, evolution has happened and it shows 50 single nucleotide polymorphism mutation which is far more actually higher than which is we consider for a dna virus in in a dna virus basically we uh, assume one to two substitution per genome per year but now there is 46 uh, uh, SNPs has been detected, 24 non-synonymous and 18 synonymous and for intergenic uh, separating the outbreak virus from the reference sequence which was derived from 2018. There was uh, three significant amino acid changes were also, uh, uh, also observed which is happening in the immunogenic surface glycoprotein B21 and, and there is still a lot of studies going on to understand how these mutations are going to affect the transmission and other property of the virus. Uh, initially, when we got the four sequences of Kela, uh, five sequences of Kela, we did a quickly a complete genome sequencing and then we tried to look at where it is matching. So uh, uh, it was not matching with the current strain which is circulating across the world, which is called B1. It's, it's mentioned here in the green. Uh, the few representative strain are here, but it was matching with the strain from Nigeria and the strain from imported cases happened in the USA in the current outbreak in Thailand. And then further we investigated uh, with a larger pool of the sequences, uh, including the sequences from Kela and from India. We found uh, that uh, actually they are forming a separate uh, uh, subcluster among the A clad, which is all of them are falling in clad 2B, which I just explained you, which carry all uh, the outbreak strain of particular 22 strains and that also have some of the sequences including uh, USA, UK, Thailand and uh, they further divide and the, all the Kela strain actually goes in A.2.1 uh, which is coming from UAE but uh, Delhi have 
to further bifurcations and they are forming two sublineages. One, some of uh, them goes with Kela and some of them goes uh, with, the, uh, with the rest of the sequences. So uh, these mutations and bifurcation indicate the virus is mutating fast. And the reason we know that because it is passaging from one host to another host. So the chances of mutation increase because uh, uh, the 30% population of monkeypox cases also HIV positive. So that also give opportunity for higher mutation as well. So these are uh, these are the uh, sequences here, which is further divided into sublineages one, two, three, and uh, India and Kela or Delhi and Kela sequences falling in sublineages one and two. So and when I say that uh, the Delhi, it means most of them are coming from Nigerian uh, resident who are having these infections. Uh, the further, uh, when we analyze and look at the mutations and uh, uh, variant analysis in these sequences uh, from Delhi and, and Kela, we found 25 additional APOBAC3 mutations from the monkeypox strain circulating in India. Also, there was a substitution mutation which led to the stop gain at position, uh, uh, position which also recorded in gene OPZ176. Uh, the clot mutation, uh, defining mutation was observed in C34472T in all the ret retrieved sequences from India, which is a specific characteristic of A2 lineage. So um, with the COVID and with the emerging many diseases, we have learned that timely identification and declaration, involvement of different stakeholders, enhancing the risk communication, strengthening capacity for source identification, contact tracing, quarantine, and isolation, improving the disease-specific guidelines, and also uh, working on different uh, vaccine and therapeutics, uh, making self-reliant and uh, rapid response team, capacity building, uh, and also the enhancing public health networks, production of vaccine, and logistics and supply is very much important. But same time, sensitization of the healthcare worker and community uh, to uh, non stigmatizing this disease is very much important as well. With this, I thank uh, my team, uh, who are mostly young people, uh, females and males. And I also thank our former Director General, Professor Malam Bhargav, uh, the Sri Rajesh Bhushanji, Secretary DHR, who is holding charge at the moment, Doctor uh, Director Dr. Priya Abraham, my colleague from ICMR headquarters, Dr. Niveta Gupta, ACD Chief, uh, my, uh, my colleague, Dr. Reema, Dr. Anita, and Dr. Shilachmi, who, who has worked all through the preparedness and doing this uh, study. But uh, this work cannot be completed with the great support from Kerala Public Health, including from Health Minister to, uh, to Principal Secretary, uh, the Medical Education, IDSP officers, and different hospital authorities. Also, the Delhi, uh, uh, Delhi uh, we have uh, this hospital, NLGP hospital, which is authorized hospital for admission of the cases. And Dr. Vineet Rehlan and Dr. Suresh, who are director of this institute, has been a great support in conducting different studies to understand about the disease. And I thank all of you for listening. I thank uh, the organization to invite me. I am very glad to meet, or meet all of you and feel very privileged and proud to be part of this community today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Pragya Yadav. This was an excellent presentation. Um, I would unmute everyone. And this is the time when we can ask question answers. Uh, <coughs> yes, Dr. Sajad. OK, thank you very much. Uh, it was excellent uh, uh, presentation. Uh, 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 Pregya, uh, uh, Zabardast, and uh, uh, very informative. Uh, I would like to, I have missed a few uh, portion of your presentation, uh, unfortunately. I just, I uh, would like to know that you have said that 18 cases have been detected uh, in India. Uh, uh, I want to know uh, it, it, which part of the India, number one, uh, what is the gender uh, ratio? Uh, and the thirdly, are they travel? I are they uh, transmit locally or from the abroad? Thank you. Yeah, so thank you so much for uh, for the question. Actually, so I just presented in one of the slides where we have shown that total 
18 cases has presented from India uh, that include uh, only from two states, though the samples were screened from a huge number of the state, referrals were made and the 30 functional laboratories are screening these samples whenever coming to them. We are also screening and confirming. We have set up a quality control. So uh, from our country, uh, the Kela and New Delhi, these two states has reported the cases. Uh, Kela has reported six cases. They are all imported from UAE. Delhi has reported 12 cases. One is Indian uh, citizen and 11 are Nigerian citizens and they have no travel history. So they uh, so some sort of outbreak is going on uh, in, in Delhi in this particular community where the cases are being detected. Uh, out of 18, uh, 11 are male and 7 are female. No pediatric cases has been reported. From Kela, one of the UAE returning uh, uh, very young ma male was also found AS, AS uh, symptoms and died. And later on, it was confirmed as monkeypox case. I hope I answer your question. Yes, yes. I, I, I one one thing more. Uh, how can we protect ourselves from the uh, um, uh, monkeypox infection? Can we prepare? Uh, can we say the general public to do something a uh, preventive measure, adopt preventive measures to to follow uh, to avoid this uh, uh, monkeypox? Number one. Uh, how can the government can uh, play their role to protect the uh, monkeypox? So uh, actually, WHO CDC has uh, released a very good guideline. Indian government also released a, a guideline which actually emphasized that uh, the, all the practices which we did for COVID, including the hand hygiene, uh, mask practices, and if anybody is suspected to monkeypox, not to be very close. More important, if there is a case, it should be wise to uh, to put them in isolation, in negative isolation ward and uh, the people are doctors, nurses who are handling, they should have a, appropriate PP not getting infected because recent some of the studies uh, from US and also when we did in India, we found uh, that uh, uh, when, when there is an infected patient, uh, a large volume of the virus is secreted and even we could isolate uh, the virus from ward where the patients were admitted, including a different part of the ward. So it, that shows the huge number of the virus is secreted uh, through the lesioned roof and, and uh, the fluid and all these things. So the, the area actually become very infectious. But for the, for the normal public, I don't think there is a much fear because the number of cases are very lower. But at the same time, if uh, people and practices of uh, having uh, the sex practices should be followed safe, use of the condom, but at the same time, there is another risk, the like tip of uh, the, uh, the penis is not actually, if it is having the virus, it can it still affect the close intimacy, close context, is still a touch. So I think these are the certain steps if we follow, we can avoid the uh, There was a lot of discussion about if you are taking care of the patient at home. Uh, is happening in many countries. So, uh, so you have to follow very a strong guideline of decontamination of the surface area following uh, uh, for uh, following the separate toilets and all those practices, which I think very well defined during the COVID as well. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prager. Thank you. Dr. Hussain. Dr. Hussain, can you ask a question? Saurabh, can I come in? Uh, yeah, please introduce yourself and ask question. Okay, I'm Dr. Chakravarti. I'm a microbiologist and um, uh, my field of work is in virology. I, uh, excellent presentation. I really enjoyed your presentation and you gave a total picture of uh, starting from the history to the detection and immunization. Now, I would be interested in knowing two things. Number one, mode of transmission, okay? Uh, it is one of the STDs, they say, and as well as is it droplet, is it aerosol, because uh, it's very important to have a proper hospital control measures for these things. Second thing is you talked about genomic variations. So will the vaccines currently available, will they be effective against uh, the genomic variant strains? Because these are just showing, I think, point mutations. So that's all. That's all I would like to ask. 
so uh, regarding the transmission so yes uh, so all uh, the patients should be definitely isolated in negative pressure isolation wards the uh, treating people should have at least um, n95 double gloves and also other disposable uh, gowns which was recommended during the covid the more importantly if you talk say about the aerosols of pox has been called aerosol transmitting disease and i just take you to back uh, the history of the the first uh, in the burging when uh, there was a smallpox uh, outbreak uh, because of the ahu uh, virus transmitted and caused to the cameraman and the mother they died and because of that the restriction of pox viruses was stored only in the containment facility of russia and us so yes uh, there could be uh, but the transmission in current outbreak is mainly happening in a very clo close context only those people are staying together in a very clo close context like the case which happened from human to dog so it was because the area room and everything is and if you are very uh, having the skin to skin close contact either by, by sex by kissing there are many method which bring lot of intimacy for a longer time it cannot be just covid like you sit in front of somebody for a very short time and sneeze and cough can leak it is not not the case but a very close intimacy only and that is proven by different studies across the world where people have recorded number of the cases uh, having uh, but yes uh, the having the sex is one of uh, the uh, the main features was brought and again again in this particular outbreak in the current scenario regarding the mutations and the vaccine which you have mentioned so the currently the cdc has come up with the data where they demonstrate that those people there was some breakthrough were re recorded but still those people who has a vaccination they were showing 14 time higher protection in compared to the non vaccinated individual so for sure the existing vaccine is working for the monkey pox and 85% efficacy has been observed with the vaccinia virus existing vaccine for the monkey pox virus the good thing is in pox they have a very good cross reactivity from one virus to another virus so i think yes the current vaccine is definitely working but many uh, companies farmers are also trying to make a monkey pox specific vaccine because uh, it is slowly established in the community and there will be a fear and it will be wise to have the more vaccine for rest of the world who, are, who don't have the access for the current existing vaccine Doctor, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor Hussain from South Africa, you back? Uh, yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Shorab. Uh, let me take this opportunity to congratulate Doctor Kazi Wasix, Simo President, twenty twenty two, and his team. And the scientific session was presented in a Simo meeting. It was excellent, excellent paper. Said Shamim was doing that. So you won't have any shortage in future. to get a scientific paper to present in simao uh, my question here to dr yadav is a excellent evidence based presentation uh, you mention hiv positive patient link with the monkeypox in south african study those few cases we have none of them was hiv positive so can you highlight some more information on those hiv patient where and how it happened thank you Uh, my apologies is if i confuse you so it is not about the south african studies but uh, the current outbreak which is going in europe us so there is a paper has come up where they have presented that out of 500 odd cases 30% cases were hiv positive so uh, uh, so i hope i clear my point here thank you no thank you so much thank you thank you uh, dr sen uh, dr monica you would like to uh, add something or ask question Dr. Yadav, that was a fantastic uh, presentation. I want to echo what's been said that uh, right from the history to uh, the vaccine and everything in between, uh, this is uh, fantastic. There's a lot of concern now as we are getting further in with the number of infections, and in terms of the fatalities. And you had published about the first Indian fatality in Kerala. I think now we're we're spending a little bit more time um, focusing on this particular. Um, um infection given that uh covid is uh is slightly uh, receding as well um i also like the fact that you um commented on the neurological uh complication in the presentation of the fatality 
uh, in India, and that is something that we cannot ignore whenever we see patients with acute uh, neurological symptoms. Uh, so I would like to say again, thank you for all the points that you highlighted, and there was a lot of information that you presented to us that was a very high quality, um, and uh, thank you again. Thank you. I think in the interest of time, uh, we have already crossed the window, so uh, I sincerely thank for the excellent knowledge which has come on this forum. And uh, thank you, speaker. Uh, you're most welcome. Uh, our team will contact you for a follow-up discussion. Uh, we would need a regular update like this. Uh, Dr. Wazik, yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Yadiv. It was excellent presentation, fantastic. And here I would like to acknowledge uh, that this weekly Zoom meeting was started by Dr. K.K. Agarwal, our uh, ex-president, uh, and uh, keeping up uh, the uh, you know legacy. Uh, Swarab is doing an excellent job. And I would like to thank Monica especially because uh, she joins us from US. And uh, I don't know what the time is, must be uh, uh, Two or three, two o'clock or three o'clock, uh, you know, early morning. So it is almost uh, middle of the night, and uh, she's regularly helping uh, Sarab uh, and you know, uh, keeping uh, these uh, uh, weekly meetings on. And uh, excellent presentations, excellent scientific work presented, and uh, I think uh, we must. Uh, thank all the participants present here today and uh, Sarab, I just wanted to know uh, we were thinking of doing it uh, bi-monthly or two meetings in, in a month because weekly meeting is definitely uh, a stress for you and uh, for other people to join in. So you can always uh, decide. I will come back to you. Like we can have a call offline for that. Thank uh, you everybody for joining in. And thank you all, and especially Dr. Jade for uh, excellent presentation today. Thank you, Dr. Kazi, and thank you for your kind words. Uh, we really appreciate your uh, acknowledgement for that. Uh, so with this note, we would like to end this session. Uh, thank you so much once again, the speaker and all the countries been as a participant over here. Uh, we come forward uh, over here, try to present all this knowledge. And uh, thank you, everyone. We have no words to express for that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. See you soon. Bye. Okay.